Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good evening and half a day. I'm Jason Silas here with another fantastic information packed episode of KUM News Extra. We thank you as always for tuning in. Tonight, my friends, we are going to bring you an update from our friends at the Oasis Empowerment Center and tell you about a day camp for the island's deaf community, so you want to stay tuned for that. But right now, we want to lead off the show with a project called Friends of the Park, an initiative which seeks to improve the quality and usefulness of many of the island's parks right now. Now, Marie, Marie Benito and Dustin Bautista are here, and we are going to talk about this very topic. Hafenea, thanks for joining me tonight. Thanks for having us. Okay, so uh, the intent of the projects is obviously very, very noble, and it seems rather cut and dry. Uh, explain how it came to be and exactly how will the parks be improved and which parks are you targeting first? Okay, um, Island Girl Power has uh, moved into the newest compound on Isengsong Road, and across the street from that is uh, one of 12 parks within the Kaiser Dededo footprint uh, that need revitalization. They've been there for about 30 or 40 years, but they've become overgrown. Um, it's been utilized for other purposes, parking lots. Uh, there's some dumping in the park, but it's not utilized for the purpose it was meant. So our hope is to restore them to their former luster and actually enhance them if we if we could with uh, the limited funding that we now have. Mm. Well, with the funding being, you know, like a, somewhat of a of a barrier, um, Dustin, what kinds of enhancements, like Marie said, are going to be made like to the park? Because obviously they need, you know, they have become a major eyesore on the island. So, you know, things like uh, lawn mowing, bush cutting services, uh, possible painting, perhaps even going so far as lighting so that the kids can play in like a safe and friendly environment, you know, create that community. Yes, uh, the, um, the parks themselves have three playing surfaces. They got a tennis court, there's a basketball court, and a racquetball handball court too. So those will be need We'll need lighting for them, uh, lines for the courts for all the boundaries, and a general resurfacing of the playing surfaces. Um, other things we'll be needing are like painting for the, the walls, because it gets, it's gotten pretty uh, covered with graffiti, and um, just general upkeep on the park. Yeah, it's really, really tragic what's happened to the parks, because I remember in, in the Guam that I was growing up, and there was one of those parks, probably like one or two of them in every major neighborhood, out mm -hmm. here and the community really took a sense of ownership in yes. not only using them but you know saying hey hey you know we were given this by the government or you know like the mayors put this together or even the people of the community you know put it together the onus of responsibility is on us to make sure that you know it stays in good condition and to take care of it because we all make use of it unfortunately it hasn't panned out that way so right. what, what can you say maybe to restore that sense of ownership and say like you guys are doing a great job to uh, improve and enhance, as you said, you know, the parks and everything, but going forward, so you guys won't have to come back every single year and clean up, how do you actually get communities and pockets of people to actually take care of their own parks? Right, that is the, the, the di more difficult part. Cleaning up a park uh, and leaving it is not, not easy, but it's, it's probably the easier part of the, the package. What we're looking at is a sustainability, so we're uh, attempting to get commitments from at least five organizations and the residents themselves to commit to uh, adopting the park and cleaning it uh, on a regular basis, at least every Saturday, have a different organization come in and adopt it. So roughly 12 times a year, one organization can, can uh, take hold of a park. In addition, we'd like to have sports feder federations come in and utilize, there's an available basketball court, tennis volleyball court, and a handball court that are sitting idle and waiting to be utilized by many of the neighborhood kids. Our focus is on getting physical activity in the most accessible uh, way. And um, while there are many other larger parks, kids can't access them unless they have an adult who can drive them there. This is an easy because it's on the backyard of at least 50 to 100 homes mm -hmm. and more people can, can enjoy them. So we're talking about sidewalks that kids can literally walk to their, uh, their nearest court and uh, access physical activity. I know these things used to be so immediately accessible when I, when I was growing up and like everybody, like I said, you know, everybody had their park and you know, you were more than welcome to come over to a friend's park and like, hey, let's go, you know, play on the swing set over here. Let's go play, you know, let's go have a tennis rally or everything like that. Now it's, you know, it's more of a punchline to some people because they say, you know, who's got the more, you know, deplorable park. Okay. so. Um, how are you reaching out to partners, as Marie said, uh, Dustin, in, in making sure that you know you can have this? And are you in need of um, different sets of hands as you guys go around and paint this? Because you, obviously you're going to need rags, paint itself, paint brushes, you know, like uh, and human labor. Yeah, absolutely. We need all the support we can get, whether it's by human labor or materials. Um, 
We've managed to partner with some sports federations uh, that want to lend a hand, but just calling out to any and all who might be interested, and uh, the more the merrier. And let's let's show them that we love our parks and we want to try to restore it and get the kids off the Xbox and the computer and bring them back outside. Because like you were saying, we were the last generation, I think, of kids who played outside. Mm -hmm. So we want to bring them back outside and, and any of the number of sports federations that will partner with us or can, they are more than welcome to host any clinics they'd like to, to showcase their sport and just general physical activity. And now if you want to do that kind of thing, I mean, you know, you might have to have a gym membership or, you know, belong to one of the hotels and resorts, which is totally cool, but not everybody can afford that. Right. And not free. everybody can do that every single day after school. Exactly. This yeah. is free. And, you know, with the limited um, PE allowed or uh, mandated for the elementary schools, this would be a, a no-brainer. You know, we want kids in the neighborhood. We're going to uh, hook up with uh, M Maria Ujoa and Beneventi and hopefully bring them into the parks as well uh, sometime in September. All right, so let's start at Isang Sung Road and hopefully branch it out and get the whole island involved in many different communities. Exactly. Yeah. Our first cleanup is tomorrow. We have July 8, 9, 10, 12th and 19th from All 9 right. to 1. So we invite everybody to come to Island Girl Power and, and uh, assist us in any way you can. And real quick, is there a phone number where people can call if they would like to help out or if they have more information? Definitely. We have uh, Island Girl Power's number is 688-4752. Uh, you can contact Juanita or myself at that number. All right, thank you both so much. I remember everybody, it is only a few hours of work, but it makes a lifetime of difference. Please do it for the kids. We will be back right after this.